Namaste and welcome everybody. Today in this video I will show you how you can create a sword contact effect in Unity 3D. It means the effect that you are going to get when your weapon gets into the wall, enemy, or some other object. Please watch this video till the end and do not miss any important parts, because doing that may not provide you with the actual final result. Also, as usual, I will reveal the upcoming video at the end. Before starting the tutorial, if you are not a member of Game Factory, then I want you to go down and hit the subscribe button to join this developer community, where we discuss making games. And thanks to all those new subscribers, because of whom I get motivated to create content like this. Here I am creating a combo attack system for the character, which will do a sword attack with trail effect and is capable of performing multiple attacks, e.g., light and heavy. I am showing you this part to be sure that you won't get confused in the process of programming. Or you can also get an idea of this attack system. I have split this video into parts. That's why if you can understand the basic rules and if you are not a beginner, then you can skip this part. Now that our character can attack, it's time to make the sword react when it hits any object or wall. Create a melee weapon script and follow the video. We are going to shoot a line from point A to point B. Layer mask to verify only detectable layers. Hit count, integer to limit the number of sword collisions at a time. Recover time to cool down the effect after a hit. Separate array variables for audio and particle effects. Later, we're going to use number codes to play specific audio for specific wall types. For example, the concrete wall will be known as zero, wood by one, metal by two, and so on.
create a public reset function to reset the values. Instead of creating an update function, we are going to create a public function and name it active. We will be calling this function from the attack script only if the character is attacking and is at a damaging point within the animation. We're going to shoot the line cast only if the recover time is lower than zero. We are adding another string variable to record the current wall type. If there is no tag within the object, then it will be declared as concrete. We are now going to use a switch statement to go through conditions. If the ray finds any object, then we are going to call the hit function, where we send hit information and number code of the wall type. In the hit function, we are going to perform five actions. Play audio, instantiate particles, generating camera shake, and for the main part, we are going to create an effect that shows the character getting jammed for a moment. For now, leave it with audio and particles. Soon we will be adding other calls. Use on draw gizmos to give a visual representation of your line cast. Let's now create the jam effect. We have to create two functions for that. You can do this in the same script, but I chose the player manager script to store these functions. Since it has the properties of a singleton, I can later call these functions from other scripts without any hesitations. Create two variables. One boolean is used to check for contact, while the other is used to set the speed and time. Create a public function and name it sword contact and call a coroutine if there is no contact at the moment. Complete the coroutine as shown. Getting back to the melee weapon script, call the sword contact function from the hit function. And also, if you've got the setup for camera shake, you can use that. Or, if you don't have any camera shake setup for your game, you can skip this camera shake line of code. It's time to complete this thing. Let's go ahead and create events within our attack animations. We are going to call this an event named trail and send a value from zero to the above. Where more than one means start 
and 0 means stop. I am sending 125 because I can later use this value as a damage rate. Now in your attack script, create a function called trail. Ignore every line of code except create two variables, one boolean for damage enabled and one reference for your weapon. Set the value of damage enabled accordingly. Call for the reset setting of your weapon when the trail starts. Set the damage enabled to false if your character is no longer attacking. Inside your update function, only if damage enabled is true. Call the active function of your weapon that we created before. Here you can see a time lapse of me creating simple particle systems for the sword contact hit. I am creating three particles for three types of walls. I created a time destroyer script that destroys the particle after a given time period. And I also have different types of sound effects for the contacts. Now, after you have your audio and particles, let's attach the script to the objects and assign variables. Select your sword object and add the melee weapon script. For the S underscore point, select the upper right arm from your character's armature. The thing to keep in mind is that the S underscore point should always remain inside the collider of the character. And E underscore point meaning the endpoint should be at the tip of the sword. To create an endpoint, select your sword bone, or maybe the sword object, only if it is being controlled by an armature. Right-click and select Create Empty to create an empty game object. Name it, E underscore point, and assign it to the variable. Now change its position to the tip of the sword. Select the layers set the settings to their best and assign audio and particles. I am giving tags to these three different objects. Concrete, wood, and metal. And finally, we are done. Now you have a sword contact effect in your game. We've come to the end of the video. But hold on. I would like to show you how I do audio management. To play audio, I just have to give a code name to the sword, like light sword, and every weapon that has this code will grab the audio from the scriptable object. And also, without any effort or messy code, I can give multiple audios to the effect, which then play randomly. In the script, all I have to do is to create a string variable for a code name and call the function by sending the code name. This is very helpful and easy to use. I designed this system for my other game, Savragog, and I use for my other project also. If you haven't seen that game, you can find the videos on this channel. Check them out right now. This way of managing the audio is much more flexible and makes the work much easier. I can use this to manage audio for the player many different items, many different enemies and objects without any difficulties. If you want to see a tutorial on this, then feel free to comment it out. Let's leave everything behind and have a look at the final result.
I hope this video was helpful and you get the idea of how it is done. If you do have some question, you can freely comment it out. I will try my best to answer you. Last but not least here are some of the upcoming tutorial videos. A. Simple but effective wall climbing mechanics. B. Full process of creating a cricteur and importing to Unity. If you like this content, then please hit the like and subscribe buttons, and if you want to get notified when a new tutorial arrives, then hit the bell icon. And at the end of this video, I will make sure to come up with more amazing tutorial videos for you guys. Thank you for making this to the end, until next time, goodbye and take care.